one thing I think is problematic with with modern production is that it tends to be extremely silent and clean and I just don't I don't think it feels natural when when a song has a moment of complete silence I usually put something like this on like everything this is just this guy making noise you know? I try to vary them a bunch so I sometimes I'll do tape sounds and I, I, I like to like uh, take a nice mic and crunch some papers or you know uh, waves from the ocean or anything like rain is good you know, like but anything you just put it on a little bit little layer underneath uh, it just you don't notice it but you you kind of like feel it it's, it's just like an atmosphere this one is called CZ 1000 and um, when we were recording the poolside first poolside album we used it on almost every song and then um, when we started playing live shows we bought um, the equivalent of this one but just smaller because it has the same presets and it's the exact same synth it's called a CZ 101 um, and when we got that one you know we opened up the presets like oh it's the same and then all of a sudden I realized that they're like completely clean turns out that this one is actually has a broken converter so it has um, some weird distortion that is on every single sound and all of a sudden really realized that like that that's actually the sound that we like about this keyboard and um, we actually ended up multi-sampling it for touring with it and and we didn't use we used it for a few gigs the little one but it was kind of like uh, the point of, of the actual sound is is because this thing is broken so because of that I, I kind of like made multi samples of of most of the the patches that that we've been, you've been using that's kind of like to me like the poolside synth it's like that and a 303 are like the two keyboards that are like on almost everything in here um, that in the in this like end of the sound it starts like crackling so like pretty heavy noise there's just a ton of noise this is the original sound and here we have the multi sampled contact version with this I I, I I like it so much already so I don't I don't do much I, I sometimes uh, sometimes I compress it a bunch because then it actually brings out the noise even more because the tail end gets louder and um, maybe a little bit of, of kind of like mono to stereo spreading effects to make it wider but I don't put a lot of delay or reverb on it because that is like uh, hides hides the actual sound, so I want them to be in, like in your face, you know. When trying to make this library, um, especially because it's, it's kind of, it's not about quantity; it's about like having a few sounds that are really special. So I just try to try to kind of like do what I what I do the most and what I feel like that is kind of like my signature in some way, and. One thing I made um, a bunch of uh, percussion loops, and the reason why they're loops is because like the percussion itself is is not like the one shots are not really ex exciting to me. So um, one thing I do again, and the space echo comes in, is that like um, I plug like a pretty basic microphone, like a fifty seven or something, straight into the space echo and just have a little bit of delay and a little bit of uh, spring reverb and I record my percussion through that. My whole concept with the percussion I like to I'm not a very good percussion player and I think I think that's my like biggest strength so like I, I developed a theory that like if if you take one bad percussion track it's gonna be very noticeable, noticeable but if you layer like five or six sloppy percussions all of a sudden somehow they like make it work you know because 
they even each other's mistakes out and then it becomes really alive but in a good way if you for example have a loop that's um, let's say eight bars then a good technique to make it seem like it's more alive is to actually instead of looping it at eight bars then cut maybe like a half a bar off and so that the one is never the same and so you kind of like recycling the uneven stuff and 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 give that life same with with claps like for example i have i think i have some claps in this one like that's again a hand played clap with again through the space echo and as you can hear every single one of them sounds different and so if I use like a program snare and a program clap I like to actually put something like that underneath it not even like as the main sound but like actually it's a reflection that just makes it uh, sound like like that life is like always uh, kind of like slowly changing and again with claps even like when you program claps is it's very um it just the logical way to do it is you know just have one clap and you continue with that or have a couple of different ones and again the logical choice if you want it to move is usually four claps and then again like i i, I just add one so it's five and that means it becomes basically polyrhythmic so it never it takes a while till it starts looping you know so your brain kind of like notices that like subconsciously um, and it just makes it uh, feel less less programmed you know but anyways this is there's a kick the kick is in there too and this is how the the sum of all this sounds So, you know, that's a layer of really like unperfect unperf stuff, but it just gives it this kind of like, sounds really like big and sounds lush, even though it's very simple instruments. One thing that also like is, it's a really easy trick, but for some reason I keep going back to it because it just works, but, because um, especially in a lot of dance music, there's like, people use transitions that are like, uh, you know, all these like build sweeps and stuff. And, but the old school way of doing that is actually just like a, a cymbal swell. And so I added one of those that I probably use almost every track too. But um, again, like, you know, when you're getting to the chorus, you just put this thing in. <laughs> and then it's, you know, like, kind of like live sounding way of, of transitioning and it just works and then I combine that with you know um, with some of those synth sweeps that are slider but like so you know and yeah I think that's definitely like stuff I, all this stuff that I put in in the pack is, is stuff that is my go-to stuff like and, and it kind of like becomes <laughs> that's my sound I guess you know um, and it's kind of fun because like when you listen to these things I think also you're gonna realize how easy it is to actually create them and it's just like often when when they get layered together that it sounds way more complex than it actually is and and, and a lot of it is just like a lot of error you know and a lot of uh little f messed up distortions and weird wrong reverbs and stuff and it just it just adds up in a production and all of a sudden it sounds like alive and moving and all this stuff um and how do you feel about the fact that people might start sounding like you then if they use these sounds Ah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> then I'll, you know, it'll. If that happened, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But if if it was that like everything, then it's just a good good motivation to to like 
try something new, you know. <laughs> it's not really like what what it can do is what you do with it, you know. So you still have to have an idea, you know. It's like it's not going to be a song just because you have uh, a couple of hand claps and some, you know. <laughs> so you have to like make it into some things, of course. So sure. I'm not worried about that. Sharing is caring. <laughs>